10 years, 10, 15 years ago, I was doing the whole thing. I got my medical degree, practicing as a doctor, um, working very, very hard and no time for anything else. I sort of, I sort of realized that there's got to be something more to this than when I got thinking, I realized that there's much more material things in my life than I need. By cutting that down, then eventually cutting down other activities and mental um, activities as well, I, I ended up with more time, energy and money to do what I really want to do. Hello everyone, today we are here with Dr. Amila Dialvis who is both a doctor as well as the author of Minimalism which is actually available in all three languages as well. It's a minimalist book on minimalism. What does minimalism mean in this book that you're also referring to in your life? Is it just lifestyle choices? Is it thinking patterns? Most, most books for example on minimalism would talk about materialistic goods, you know, get rid of clothes, books, uh, what you possess. But I've taken it a bit a step further where I've got a section on mental minimalism. So once you start with the materialistic uh, part of it, that's the easy part, that's the starting point, and you realize its benefits, you can extend that same concept to mental activities, your activities on a daily routine, uh, all the people you try to keep up with and keep in touch with. And then in that way, you not only have less um, material things to choose from but at the same time you've got more uh, time more energy less mental clutter to work with and I think one thing that's very important is the tagline in the book itself which says do more with less with those that matter could you elaborate a little bit more on what that means yeah so so basically like we said we have less material possessions we've got less mental activities and mental thoughts that frees up your mind to do more of what you want to do. So that's the more part, you're doing more. At the same time, I mean, when you look at it, we have a handful of important people in our life. Sometimes where there's, when there's so much clutter and there's so many people, we sort of forget who those people are. So when you are more clear in your mind, uh, you know exactly who those people are, so you've got more time, more energy to spend with those important people making the change you want to see. And I think Sri Lanka also has been through COVID as well as an economic crisis and I think this is a very relevant concept which can help change the lives of our Sri Lankans as well. On that note, we also heard of the crowdfunding that's taking place for 225 copies of the book. Uh, who are these copies for and what is the project that's running? So basically Minimalism 225 is a project where I've crowdfunded money to buy and donate books to our 225 parliamentarians. Now. When I started being a minimalist and I realized my, the benefits, that gave me the idea to write the book to get the message out easier. And then, of course, we had COVID, which forced us to be minimalistic in our ways. Uh, then we had economic crisis, which forced us again to be minimalistic in our spending. And then I thought, when you look back, uh, 75 years of our history, uh, it's been the wrong mindset and the wrong choices made by our leaders that have got us here. Of course, we've contributed too because I feel overall, globally, uh, we are living way beyond our means. Uh, our needs are very little, but our wants are very ex excessive. So as a result, globally and also as a country, we've been living beyond our means. And then what happens is that, I mean, the people who are at the top making our decisions are parliamentarians. So we realize, I mean, I realize that definitely if we can change their mindset, because think of it, when you expect, when you say I'm going to be a politician, the social expectations are you'll do exactly what they're doing. So why not change that expectation, change their mindset to realize that what is important at the end of all this is the legacy you leave behind and the name you have and the number of people you've helped. And that's what everyone would want to be. Definitely the politicians would like that too. What happens is the parliamentarians now they've got fogged by this social thinking that you know we need to hold or collect more things more of everything and then I become more powerful. We change the mindset and I'm hoping even if I change the mindset by 5% of 5% of our parliamentarians that will cause a big dent and that is where the Minimalism 225 campaign started. At the moment I'm speaking to, I've given the copy to a few party leaders, I'm trying to do that first and then I'm in touch with parliament to sort of donate this officially and then speak to them in small groups um, about the concept of minimalism. So it's not just individuals' lives or uh, families' lives that you're hoping to impact. In fact, it's a structural change that you're hoping to create in this as exactly. well. Exactly. For the whole country, I mean, I think if we can sort of change the way we think from top down, um, I think we've got enough resources, enough of what we want in this country for everyone to be happy, not just a, a select few. 
and I think that brings us to the question of what do you expect readers to gain from this book and how is this book beneficial in the lives of these readers? So firstly, like you said, you know, most minimalistic books um, are very big. They've got 200 pages. So I've made it a point to try to keep my message to 25 pages, which means you pick it up and in one go in an hour or so, you'll be able to read the whole book. It tells you step by step what to do to become more minimalistic. First, the material possessions, then the, uh, the mental things. And it tells you, I mean, even room by room, um, individual by individual, how this happens. So I think by reading it, um, you may not change overnight because you've got to remember that, you know, being consumers are evolutionary. History tells us to be consumers because you know, when you were cavemen or uh, when we were uh, maybe a few hundred years ago, the more you had, the safer you were. So we want to hold, we want to collect, we want to keep things to ourselves. So once we change that mindset slowly, I feel that everyone will realize the benefits that will encourage them to go further down this path. And also before you were an advocate of minimalism or an author, you were a doctor as well and still currently are a still. doctor. How is that connected to your journey as an author? So I feel being minimalistic has sort of made my mind much clearer and I'm more mindful as to what I'm doing. My mind's here when I'm doing it because I've got not many places for my, for my mind to be. So I feel that my patients have benefited from it as well because I'm there, I'm seeing a few patients of course, but I can be dedicated to them much more than I was in the past. And you also mentioned how this book was inspired by your journey, your life with your family, how it has created more time. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, how this has benefited you in other ways, how it has changed your life, your mind and also the people around you? So I think, I mean, always you know, it's got to start with yourself. You can't force this on anyone else. Um, you start it with yourself and then when others see the benefit of it, they will be hopefully inspired to take on the same thing. Uh, it's changed my mind, uh, my life entirely because earlier I was doing nothing but uh, you know my profession and I had so many things I wanted to do you know uh, in life I had this whole long checklist of things I wanted to do and I'm ticking them off one by one because I'm I'm working a bit less because I need less uh, and I'm finding more time to do the real things that really matter as much to me as my uh, profession of being a doctor. And I'm sure most of the people who are watching today are also very excited to get their copy of the book and also be updated with your journey in case you're writing any new books and your views on minimalism. So how can they stay updated with your work and get a copy for themselves as well? So the, the book was published in uh, all three languages by MD Gunasenis. It's available in, at all the outlets and also it's been distributed to uh, the other leading bookstores. And it's also available at the MD Gunasena online store as well. Uh, I am writing another book, hopefully it will be out within the next month or two. It's uh, on simplifying the mind to all of us. So just what the mind is and how powerful it is, I'm doing that as well. Um, and um, also, um, I'm, I'm ta I'm, you can connect with me on Facebook and my Instagram page, Amila1975. And just last mention that every uh, all, all profits from this book are going into um, a charity called One Child, it's educational a charity that helps children um, you know stay in school feed them and even look after them when they're sick so all profits are going into that charity as well thank you so much that brings us to a conclusion of this interview as well we have one book and another book on the way and we're very excited that this journey is going to change not only people's lives but also a systematic change for sri lanka so with that being said thank you so much thank and good luck much, on your journey thank you very much